ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Welcome back everybody. Alhamdulillah. Good to see you all again. <clears throat> so we will, let me see. I think last time there were some ch- questions on chat that I typically miss. And I apologize for that because I can't always see the, the questions. Um, So somebody asked me if you were on a plane uh how would you know uh what time the prayer is uh we will you estimate the prayer based on where you see the sun you you know you can lift up the the window and you estimate the prayer and that would be fine uh so when you say when you uh are about to start on the plane let's say you did it after lower time or upon lower time you pay lower and then you estimate your flight travel distance and how long it would take you and what time it would be over there your destination so let's say you uh and started your prayer at lower time but you would reach there on asar time a little bit after asar where you will be able to catch asar um then you can delay your asar until then or what you can do is uh, on the plane you would pray dhuhr and asar uh, together too and then salam and then two more for asar and say salam so you could do that as well you can combine your salawat it will be easy for you if you do that okay you're not allowed to combine the salah before you leave for the airport because you're not yet traveling okay but while you're traveling you can combine your salah okay does that answer that question patma chala um and then how do you indicate to an imam whether they've made a mistake uh if the imam has made a mistake um first of all don't try to be distracting to the imam because typically everybody you know if a, a common surah is recited or something like that everybody starts to comment only people in the first row are allowed to do that first of all but if if you want to indicate to the imam um you can say subhanallah you can basically say things that are part of the prayer you can you you will say subhanallah for guys they can use their voice and for women they can clap okay just to kind of get attention so that they don't use their voice So this is for getting the imam's attention if you mean mistake. Yeah, getting the imam's attention to let them know that they made a mistake. And what if the girls and like men's thing is separated and another man? Then the yeah. women will not be able to do it. It would be the job of the men to let the imam know that they made that he made the mistake. If nobody caught the mistake, then the prayer is accepted. No problem. If nobody figured it out. Any other questions on that? Okay. Do we have Fatma here? You can let me know in the chat. No, I don't I don't I don't see a lot of people today. Where's everybody? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's get uh, started with uh, Surah Al-Imran. We're more than half the way through alhamdulillah. So we will continue. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh so where we ended up ended last time was uh, on ayah 112 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the those who believed in rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um while they were christians or jews before and then they started believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is again ayat that were uh, came down in medina so that's the context so the christians and the jews some of them they are becoming muslims and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising them Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ليسوا سواء They are not the same. Who are not the same? من أهل الكتاب 
from the people of the book, Ummatun Qa'imatun, uh, an upright nation, Yatluna Ayatillah, they are reciting the ayat of Allah, the, the verses of Allah, Ana al all through the night, through the hours of the night, Wahum yes judun, and they are prostrating. Basically, they are praying at night. <clears throat> Who are, who are they not the same with in the previous one? The people who did not believe, the Jews and the Christians who did not believe in Rasulullah they are not the same, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, as the ones who did believe, obviously, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating their ranks. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps talking about them, really beautiful things. Yu'minuna billah, they believe in Allah, wal yawm al-akhir, and they believe in the last day, وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And they command to do what is good. وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And they forbid what is evil. Not, and, and, they, and they command not to do what is evil. وَيُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ And they, are haste, they make haste when it comes to doing good deeds. They, they try to do a lot of good deeds. وَأُولَٰئِكَ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And these are the people who are among the righteous. وَمَا يَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then makes a promise to everyone. وَمَا يَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ And whatever they do out of uh, goodness of their heart, whatever, whatever good deed they do, however small, فَلَنْ يُكْفَرُوهُ Then it will be never be denied for them, which means they will get the reward for the smallest good deed. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالْمُتَّقِينَ <clears throat> and Allah knows those who have fear of him, those who are pious, those who are conscious for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna ladina kafaru. As for those who believe, who disbelieve, لَن تُغْنِيَ عَنْهُمْ أَمْوَالُهُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا Their monies and their children are not going to benefit them. Basically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, this is an often repeated uh, phrase in the Qur'an. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this dunya is not going to benefit you in any way. You can try to do whatever you want to please yourself or to please your whims and desires or to please the people that you have. But at the end of the day, if you don't have iman in Allah, then nothing will benefit you. And these are the companions of the fire. And they will be in the hellfire forever. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switches to another a, a beautiful set of passages. We will cover a few of them today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the importance of sadaqah, the importance of charity, the importance of almsgiving. <clears throat> Allah says, مَثَلُ مَا يُنْفِقُونَ فِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ dunya." The example of spending in this life, in this worldly life, كَمَثَلِ rihin. It is the example of a wind. Fiha sir. It has frost in it. It is very, very cold. That wind is cold. So cold, it's frosty wind. Asabat harsha qawmin zalamu anfusahum. It strikes the people who have done wrong to themselves. Fa'ahlakat. And it destroys it. It destroys the harvest. It strikes the Harvest of the people who have done wrong for themselves and it destroys the harvest. وَمَا ظَلَمَهُمُ اللَّهُ And Allah did not wrong them. وَلَكِنْ أَنفُسَهُمْ يَظْلِمُونَ But it was themselves, they themselves did wrong to themselves. <clears throat> what does this mean? It means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, this, uh, among the parables, some are easy to understand and some you have to put a little bit of thought in. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this dunya, you, um, you earn money and from that money, you kind of try to build things. It's like you putting in the seeds and then you trying, wanting to reap a harvest, um, if, uh, you know, use, using the farming analogy, you're trying to reap the harvest at the end of the day. But if you don't spend, if you don't, if you don't uh, pay forward, if you don't spend from what Allah has, subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and your harvest and you don't give, give that in charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it will be like 
a, a cold frosty wind is going to come and destroy your harvest. Meaning it may physically not be destroyed, but the rewards of what you might get from that harvest will be obliterated. There will be no reward in it. Whatever you do and whatever you accomplish, if there is no spending in the way of Allah in whatever you accomplish, then it is, it is for as if it, you didn't do it, you will get no reward. That's what it means. So if we read this again, you'll understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the example of spending in this world is like the example of a frosty wind and it strikes the harvest of the people who did wrong to themselves and it destroys the harvest. And Allah did not do wrong to them, but they wronged themselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is never unjust. He always does justice. And uh, the, the people who did wrong, which means that Allah was not unjust that, you know, their crops were destroyed. It is there, even though they might think that whatever they're doing is for good for themselves and good for this dunya, they will not gain any reward and there's going to be no benefit for them in the day of judge, on the day of judgment. That's what it means. Any questions on that? Okay. So let's move on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, la tattakhidu bitanatan min dunikum. This is very similar to an ayah, a set of ayat we already read. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do not take as close advisors uh, and, and uh, confidants uh, from other than the believers. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, all those of you believe, don't take friends and confidants from other than yourselves. Because those who are not Muslims, those who are not believers, they will spare no effort to corrupt you. Okay? They don't have your interests uh, uh, in, in mind. What do ma'anitum? They love, they desire, and they love what distresses you. Okay, so this is again early Medina, and uh, there are Jews and Christians and, and Mushrikeen and everybody else out there. Uh, they are, they're important people, they are uh, wealthy people, they're established, so uh, the Muslims would be looking up to them, right? We want to be like them, they talk so eloquently, they're so educated, they're so cultured, remember? the Jews and the Christians were more cultured and educated because they had deen with them, right? Uh, their own deen. It, it brought along with it culture and civilization. But the, but the, uh, but the early Muslims were like Bedouins. They had nothing. <clears throat> they were a tribal society. They didn't really have much of a culture. So you're looking up to people who have a civilization. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, even though they look really good and strong, and somebody you want to be, you want to emulate, and somebody you want to befriend, and somebody you want to take as advisors, don't do that because what they want to do, they love to corrupt you, and they would love to see you in distress because you are the one in power now. Even though the Muslims, they don't, you know, they're looking up to the Jews and the Christians as uh, as cultured. Um, the, the people who are in majority are Muslims, and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is now the essentially the the mayor of Medina, uh, the default, right? So <clears throat> what the Jews and the Christians want is they're extremely jealous of Rasulullah and the Muslims and what they want is to distress them. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad badit al Their hatred has become apparent because they've already started to uh, go against the Muslims, plot and plan against them. Some of their tactics are evident you have seen hatred come out of their mouth because they are making satirical remarks. They're doing satire. They may, they're poking fun at the Muslims. Then Allah says, And you think that what they're saying is bad. What is inside their hearts, what they conceal inside their chests is even worse, is even more. قَدْ بَيَّنَّا لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ we have made plain for you these signs in Kuntum Taqilun so that you understand. So we can learn from this that we should always try to find our counsel in 
believing Muslims people we trust, okay? And especially the ones who, uh, who are believing Muslims and we trust, right? Both have to be, um, both have to be taken, that account, uh, taken that into account. And, and while we come across a lot of other people, we don't know. And if you, if you sense a little bit of on animosity, obviously you'd never wanna take them for as, as your friends, even though how beautiful their words might sound, even though how accomplished they might be, they don't have your interests in mind. They, they're only self-interested in themselves, okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going back to what I was saying earlier, you see in the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ha antum ula'i tuhibbunahum. And here you are, you love them, wala yuhibbunakum, but they don't love you. وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْكِتَابِ And you actually believe in the book, كُلِّهِ All of it, meaning they don't believe in the book. You are the ones who believe in the book. وَإِذَا لَقُوكُمْ قَالُوا آمَنَّا Because you are in majority now in Medina, and you are becoming strong, O oh believers, O oh Muslims, when they meet you, they say they want to join, right? If you can't beat them, join them. So the, the, the uh, non-Muslims in Medina, they want to join the Muslims. They, they want to pretend they, they're, be, they're, show, they're, they're being hypocrite, hypocrites. They're showing hypocrisy. They, when they meet the Muslims, they say, we believe, right? And when they meet you, they say, we believe. And when they depart, they bite their teeth and bite bite their this is tip, this is wrong it's not fingers uh they bite their teeth in rage anamil is is a, you should recognize you know the teeth um uh has uh, the the shiny part on the teeth what is that called in english the enamel yes isn't this the same word yes it is anamel Okay, so they bite their teeth in anger from their rage because they are so upset. Like, how can Muslims have all this power and how, how come they have all this strength? We were the ones who were deserving of ruling over Medina and we are the ones who are better than them and more educated than them. And who are these Bedouins and, and tribal people? So they are very, very jealous. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then only the way only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can speak in the Quran, he says, Say to them, Mutu bighaidikum, die in your anger, die in your rage. Okay, it's an expression meaning be, uh, you know, you can, you can be as jealous as you want to be. In Allah alimum bidatil bidatil sudur, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, is all knowing of what is in your breasts. Okay, in tamsaskum hasana, if good things happen to you, it bothers them because they are so jealous. They are so envious. Uh, if good things happen to the Muslims, they become, it grieves them. And if bad things happen to you, they rejoice in that. Like, look, bad things are happening to the Muslims, you know, because of the jealousy. in tasbiru. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but if you show patience, what and you consciously are, are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always and fear him, you show patience in when bad things are happening to you, O Muslims, you show patience. Okay? And you continue to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remain pious. La yadurrukum kaiduhum shay'a. Their plots and plans are never going to uh, harm you. Like if you continue to show patience, they can plot and plan all they want. Maybe, uh, maybe bad things might happen to you, but their plots and plans will never be successful. In Allah, bima ya'maluna, uh, ya'maluna muhit. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa taala is all encompassing of what they do. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa taala is fully aware. Allah subhanahu wa taala can fully control whatever is it that they do. وَإِذَا غَدَوْتَ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ um, Now there's a scene of the battle of Uhud here. Okay, a scene and, and some commentary. 
of the Battle of Uhud. Um, so if you guys remember your seerah a little bit, um, if you had studied it. So the first, the first battle that happened in Medina against the, against the uh, disbelievers was Badr. And you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave tremendous victory to a, a Muslim who were a third, third of the size of the disbelievers, right? And Muslims still were uh, victorious there were hardly any casualties in Badr. And there were tremendous amount of casualties in Badr for the disbelievers. <clears throat> so as a revenge, the, the second battle happened as a revenge because the disbelievers wanted to attack the Muslims and take revenge. And they gathered even more people to attack the Muslims, okay? So now here's the scene where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about so Muslims are going for the battle of Badr, of battle of Uhud, the second one, the, the, the one where the disbelievers want to take revenge from the Muslims for the casualties of Badr. And when you left in the morning from your household to bow to mu'minina maqaida lil qatal qital, so that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ha commanded he was a commander of the of the believers right so he had assigned posts for the muslims of where they will fight for the battle so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, that that uh, placements of the the believers um, on special posts and on the battlefield okay um, and when you left in the morning in your household to post the believers at stations for the battle Wallahu Samiun Alim and Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Um, and uh, it was scary. It was very, very scary. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the fear that the Muslims were feeling at that time because they knew like a giant army of, uh, of uh, a giant army of disbelievers is going to come and attack the Muslims. It's Hammat Ta'ifatani Minkum and Tafshala that that there were two groups from among you that were scared. They were showing weakness. Wallahu <clears throat> waliyuhuma. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is assuring them that I, I am, uh, uh, that Allah is the, their protector. And upon Allah, the believers should put their trust. Meaning even if you are scared in situation, in this situation, don't worry you know that Allah will protect you. And what the believers should do is put all their trust in Allah. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ Allah, And Allah had already helped you. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, is a reminding, a reminding the believers of what happened before. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ Allah, And Allah had certainly helped you be better in, and, and at better time, this is Uhud, right? Uh, and Allah is reminding them, didn't I help you during Badr time? And you were so weak at that time. You were just a third in number and you didn't really have even proper weapons to fight, but we still gave you victory. Then fear Allah so that you may be grateful. And you made the kum rabbukum bitalatati alafim minal malaikati munzadin. And when you said to the believer, uh, you as in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, Allah is telling Rasulullah that when you said to the believers that wasn't it enough that Allah helped you with 3,000 angels? Bala, yes. In tasbiru. If you continue to show patience and you continue to fear Allah and be conscious of Him, and then there will come to you rushingly because of this, Allah will help you with 5,000 angels, specially designated 5,000 angels. That is what Musawimin means, marked. The specially designated people to actually help you help the Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa taala is reminding the Muslims that I helped you during Badr with 
thousands of angels, 5,000 angels, because you show patience and because you feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So am I not going to help you now? Am I not going to give you victory, O Muslims? وَمَا جَعَلَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بُشْرَى لَكُمْ And those, those angels didn't come down. Allah didn't make it except but as a glad tiding, as good news uh, for, for you, for the Muslims. That Allah didn't send these, uh, Allah is not telling you this. And Allah didn't just send these angels except as a good news for you. وَلِتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُكُمْ So that Allah may... Uh, uh, may uh, give you reassurance in your hearts because of that, that Allah is with you. And, and there is no help except from Allah, Al Aziz, Al Hakim, the Almighty, and the All Wise. So that the, the, so that a part of the disbelievers will be cut off. Meaning they will lose. Um, or that Muslims would subdue them. Okay, they will overpower them. And they will turn away frustrated, wretched, lost. Um, it, and it is not for you, it is not your decision to make, O Muhammad, وسلم, because Allah, uh, because here's again a sign of the mercy that Allah had put in the heart of Rasulullah because he was very merciful. Even though he's fighting the disbelievers, he still had mercy for them. Uh, and he wanted to ask for their forgiveness uh, because, uh, because Rasulullah is rahmatul alameen. He's a mercy for all mankind. He, he's fighting back in defense against them, right? To protect them. But he's still sad that they're not believing and they're having to be killed by him and by his army. And he is feeling really bad and he wants to ask for forgiveness for those people, for the disbelievers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them, warns him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laysa Lakam min al Amri Shayun. It is not your decision to make. <clears throat> uh, that he, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns toward them in mercy. Or he punishes them. It is not your decision to make whether Allah chooses to uh, chooses to forgive the disbelievers for what they're doing or to punish them. But innahum zalimun. That is because they are the wrongdoers. Meaning, Allah will surely punish them because they are wrongdoers. And Allah can do anything He wants because for Him it will the whole. Uh, Heaven and the earth and the whole the whole universe belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's his creation. He can choose to do whatever he wants. And that, that's exactly what Allah says afterward. Yasha. He will forgive who he wants. Yasha. And he will punish who he wants. Wallahu ghafoorun rahim. But remember that Allah above all is all forgiving, constantly forgiving, rahim, constantly merciful. Okay, let's stop right here. So that was a scene from um, the, the Battle of Uhud where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about if you continue to show patience and fear Allah, nothing will harm you. And then something happened and then the Muslims actually ended up getting, uh, receiving a lot of losses because their patience and trust in Allah weakened. For some Muslims, their trust in Allah weakened and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then showed them that in Badr you had all this trust and uh, got consciousness and you showed patience and you were victorious even though you were you were small in number. Now, even though you're large in number but you sh showed weakness, then Muslims suffered. Um, not a defeat, but uh, what is not called a defeat in the history books, but Muslims suffered a lot of casualties in Uhud. Uh, 